Welcome to Dragon Horde Gaming, and in this video, I'll be opening up uh, my second Core 2021 box. Alright. Oh. Here we go. Let's get this open, please. Open, open, open. What the hell? There we go. There we go. They're all to fairies on the top. Mm, hopefully that's a good sign. Cards I'm really hoping to pull are the alternate art Ugans or alternate border Ugans. So, all right, here we go. First pack. Uh, Teferi and Liliana Planeswalker cards too. All right. Move that out of the way, and we got a conspicuous Snoop. Cost two red. Play with the top card of your library revealed. You may cast goblin spells from the top of your library. As long as the top card of your library is a goblin card, Conspicuous Snoop has all activated abilities of that card. Let's move these out of the way. I am not going to be going over the uncommons. Because that seems to take a little bit too much time for my camera to record. Right. Glorious Anthem. Cost 3. A generic 2 white. Creature using control get plus 1 plus 1. I really miss the, um, the player's guide that you get with bundles. Primal Might, cost X and a green. Target creature you control gets plus X plus X until end of turn. Then it fights up to one target creature you don't control. We got a Teferi's Protégé alternate art. Alright. Oh, and I just traded for one of these today. Liliana Zimlum. Alright. And we got a foil rare peer into the abyss. Cost 7 for generic 3 black. Target player draws cards equal to half the number of cards in their library and loses half of their life. Round up each time. Temple of Malady. When it enters, it enters battlefield tap. When it enters, scry one. It taps for black or green. Necromentia costs three, a generic, and two black. Choose a card name other than a basic land card name. Search target opponent's graveyard, hand in library for any number of cards that, with that name and exile them. The player shuffles their library, then creates a 2-2 black zombie creature token for each card exiled from their hand this way. This might be a card someone might want to put in a commander if they want to deal with those Rat decks. Hmm. So weird to see cultivate in a standard set. I've always seen it in like master sets, and seeing it in a standard set is really weird. 
Ruined Halo costs two white. When Ruined Halo enters the battlefield, name a card name. Choose a card name. You have protection from the chosen name. Rada, the Heart of Keld. Costs three, a generic red and a green. As long as it's your turn, Rada, the Heart of Keld, has first strike. You may look at the top card of your library any time. You may play lands from the top of your library. Pay six for generic red and green. Rada gets plus X plus X till end of turn, where X is the number of lands you control. Now, um, I think that's a, it's one of those really good cards that hasn't proved itself yet, but Another alt art, yeah, but it is probably going to go up in value. So, and it, I've played it at pre release, it won me some good games with it. So, yeah, all right. Have I got a mythic yet? No, I have not gotten a mythic yet. All right, and we got a temple of. Mystery. Enters tap. When it enters, scribe one. Taps for green and blue. And I also, in that same trade, got this emblem. Huh. Foil Mountain, don't care. Vito, Thorn of the Dusk Rose. Cost three, two generic and a black. Legendary creature, whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life. Pay five, three generic, two black. Creature you control, gain lifelink until end of turn. Alright, basically you give them lifelink, it's like double strike. I thought the op should have also had a Teferi alternate border. And we got a first mythic, Garuk Unleashed. Uh, normal border, cost 4, 2 generic, 2 green, plus 1. Up to 1 target creature gets plus 3, plus 3, and gains trample until end of turn. Minus 2. Create a 3-3 three, three green beast creature token. Then if it's an, a, if an opponent controls more creatures than you, put a loyalty counter on Garuk Unleashed. You get an emblem with at the beginning of your end step. You may search your library for a creature card, put it into the battlefield, then search your library. Uh, shuffle your library. Season. Oh, I'm not reading the uncommons. It goes by faster that way. Oh, and Garuk's alternate art creature common. All right, with no flavor text or anything like that. It, no, it's a very vanilla card. Angel token, and we got a Stormwing entity. Cost 5 through generic and 2 blue. The spell costs 2 and a blue less to cast. If you've cast an instant or sorcery spell this turn. Flying and prowess. When Storm Ring Entity enters the battlefield, scry 2. Land, Foil Gloom Sower, and a Solemn Silacrum. Yeah, I think I said it right this time. Cost for generic. When it enters the battlefield, you search your library for a basic land card, put that card into the battlefield tap, then shuffle your library. When it dies, 
you may draw a card. We got Karavek, a spiteful, costs four, two generic, two black. Other creatures get negative one, negative one. Legendary creature. And we got a Cultivate full art. Even though it's uncommon, it's got the rare there symbol. It's, it's really weird, but hey. Cost three, two generic and green. Search your library up to two basic land cards. Remove those cards. Put them in one in the battlefield. Tap and the other in your hand. And shuffle your library. Did it eat up a... No, it did not eat up a uncommon slot. Huh. So that was four uncommons in that. Cool. Well, that's our first full art. And there's probably only one more full art left in this box. So I've always seen two full arts every time. We got a foil cancel. Yay. And a Siberia Telzid Caravaner. Cost three to generic and a red. Legendary creature. Haste. Pay one. Another target creature with power two or less. Can't be blocked this turn. Pay two, a generic and a red, tap, discard your hand, until end of turn, whenever a creature you control with power two or less deals combat damage to the player, draw a card. Arena craft code card. I don't, you know what? I haven't seen the arena cards. And we got a foil alternate border. Cool. Oh, and a full art Liliana Waker of the Dead. Cost four. Two generic, two black. Uh, each player dis plus one loyalty. Each player discards a card. Each opponent who can't loses three life. Minus three. Target creature gets negative X, negative X until end of turn, where number of X is the number of cards in your graveyard. Minus seven, you get an emblem with at the beginning of combat on your turn. Put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. It gains haste. Nice. All right. Pretty cool. Got the full art lily. Now if I can get the Ugin, that'd be awesome. Although, I don't think I've gotten more than two Planeswalkers out of a single box. So, oops. Foil Warded Battlements. And Baron Tolarian Archmage. Cost three, a generic, and two blue. Legendary creature, when Baron Tolerian Archmage enters the battlefield, return up to one target creature or planeswalker to its owner's hand. At the beginning of your end step, if a permanent was put into your hand from the battlefield this turn, draw a card. Another alt art. Right. And we got a Spark Hunter Manticore. Cost three generic. As an additional cost to cast this spell, discard a card. Protection from Planeswalkers. One generic Spark Hunter Manticore deals one damage to target Planeswalker. Pay three Spark Hunter Manticore gains indestructible until end of turn. Ooh. 
foil eliminate. That's probably worth a little something. And I just traded mine of this earlier today. It's focusing on those. What's it focusing on? It's not wanting to focus on the card. There we go. It's focusing on the cards behind. Why? Uh, Terror of the Peaks. Cost 5, 3 generic, 2 red. Fine. Spells your opponent's cast that target Terror of the Peaks. Cost an additional 3 life to cast. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, Terror of the Peaks deals damage equal to its, that creature's power to any target. Forest and a foil of that one card. Oh, yeah, putting the alt arts there. And our rare is nine lives. Cost three, a generic, and two white. Hexproof. If a source would deal damage to you, prevent that damage and put an incarnation counter on nine lives. When there are nine or more incarnation counters on nine lives, exile it. When nine lives leaves the battlefield, you lose the game. Stewart. Alright. Scavenging news. Cost two. Generic and a green. Pay one green. XL target card from graveyard. If it was a creature card, put a 1 1 counter on Scavenging news and you gain one life. Swamp and a Bash Taunter. Cost 5 for generic and red. Indestructible. When Bash Taunter is dealt damage, it deals that much damage to target opponent. Pay uh, 2 and a red. Tap. Bash Taunter fights another target creature. I also would like to pull some Azun, uh, as soon as uh, I can't say the name, the, the one that allows you to play two additional lands. Sublime Epiphany costs six for generic two blue. Choose one or more. Counter target spell. Counter target activator triggered ability. Return target non land permit to its owner's hand. Create a token that's a copy of target creature you control. Target player draws a card. Alright, so we've gotten three mythics so far. Yeah, two planeswalkers and the dragon. And we've got a foil sanctuary sanctum of calm waters. Nice. And our foil our rare is the only on a standard bearer. Cost three, two generic and a black. Flash. When it enters the battlefield, draw X cards, where X is the number of creatures that died under your control this turn. Oh, that was a double sanctum of calm waters. Alright. Ooh, a 4 4 construct card. It's pretty cool. I haven't gotten one of them yet. Fabled Passage. Tap, sacrifice Fabled Passage. Search your library for a basic land card. Put into the battlefield tap. Then shuffle your library. Then if you control four or more lands, untap 
that land. I now have seven Fable Passages. It's a nice card to have. And we got a Chandra's Incinerator. Cost six, five generic and red. The spell costs X less to cast, where X is the total amount of non-combat damage dealt to your opponents this turn. Trample. Whenever a source you control deals non-combat damage to the opponent, Chandra's Incinerator deals that much damage to target creature or planeswalker that player controls. Oh, and an alternate art, Chandra's Megmut. Alright. Two thirds of the way through now. And we got the Garuk's emblem. This has been a very full of emblems. Thing. Uh, ghostly Pilfer costs two, generic and a blue. When it enters, uh, when it becomes untapped, you may pay two if you do. Draw a card. Where an opponent casts a spell from anywhere other than their hand, draw a card. Discard a card. Ghostly Pilfer can't be blocked this turn. And a Teferi's Tutelage alternate art. Uh, a border. So far I have not gotten uh, more than one of the spellbook borders. Uh, more than one spellbook border in a a pack. And Temple of Triumph. Enters tapped. When it enters, scry one. Taps for red and white. Can we pull all the emblems? Colossal Dreadmaw, Foil, and Peer into the Abyss. We've already gone over that one. Alright. No alts. Alt Planes and Megarna, the Diplomat. Cost 4, 3 generic and a white lifelink. Whenever opponent attacks with creatures, or two or more of them, those creatures are attacking you and or planeswalkers you control, draw a card. Whenever an opponent casts their second spell each turn, draw a card. I pulled 3 of Megara. Getting really annoyed by that one. I'd love to pull more, like, Altar Ugins or something. And we got a Sanctum of All. Cost one of each color. Being of your upkeep, you may search your library for and or graveyard for a shrine and card and put it into the battlefield. If you search your library this way, shuffle it. If an ability of another shrine you control triggers while you control six or more shrines, that ability triggers an additional time. Down to a handful of packs left. And Azunza, Lost But Seeking. Cost three, two generic and a green. This is the creature I was looking for, legendary creature. You may play two additional lands on each of your turns. Yay. Pirate. And Alpine Watchdog Foil and a Speaker of the Heavens. Do I really get this one? No. Alright, cost one white. Vigilance Lifelink. Tap. Create a 4-4 white angel creature token with flying. Activate this building only 
if you have at least seven or more life than your starting life total and only any time you cast a sorcery. All right. And we got an animal sanctuary. So many lands. Pulled. Tap at Colas. Pay two. Tap. Put a counter on target bird, cat, dog, goat, ox, or snake. It's Ferris Protege again. Alright. Down to three packs. Come on. Let's get. Another, let's get a fifth mythic, be it Ugin's alternate art. It's Feline Sovereign. Costs three, two generic and a green. Other cats you control get plus one, plus one, and have protection from dogs. I want to focus on this card. Focus on this card. Whenever one or more cats you control, do a combat damage to a player. Destroy up to one target. Artifact or enchantment that player controls. Alright, one pack left after this. And Demonic Embrace. Cost three, a generic and two black. Enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus three, plus one. Has flying and is demon in addition to its other types. You may cast Demonic Embrace from your graveyard by paying three life and discarding a card in addition to paying its other costs. Last pack. Come on. Give me that Ugin. Give me that Ugin. Please give me that Ugin. And Warden of the Woods. Foil and our rare is Gadric the Crown Scourged. Mm. Fine, Gadric the Crown Scourged can't attack unless you control four more artifacts. Beginning of your end step, create a treasure token for each non token creature that died this turn. Burlfist Oak. Oh, yeah, it's uh, on the commons. I'm not going over those. Yeah. Alright. So that was this. We got. Let's see here. Let's go over the cards real quick. See how many mythics we got. Because I'm pretty sure. It's only four. All right. One. Two. Oh, well, no, we got five. It looks like three. Maybe four. Oh, wait, no. I was wrong. Yeah, it was only four. All right. Well, we got our... Liliana, Waker of the Dead, full art, which looks really nice. Although, I I believe in the story, she doesn't have the chain veil anymore, so this must be before she gives the chain veil away. I don't know. Well, it's really hard to keep track of the story when the story is not good anymore. Well, I hope you guys enjoy the, the openings. If you did, hit the like, share, comment, subscribe, and good luck with the openings, and I'll see you in my next video. Goodbye.